you ever noticed how no one is ever asked to defend their choice to send their children to school, whereas home educators on the regular are asked from polite curiosity to outright aghast and confusion to defend their choice not to send their children to school. So here it is, once more for the people at the back, the reasons I am not sending my children to school this September, or possibly ever. This is probably going to be quite a long talky one, so feel free to put me on in the background while you're tidying up or making dinner or doing all the things we do. summer holidays now in the UK so it's kind of a poignant time for me right now in that this September would be when my children would be due to start school. These sunny days here in the UK would be some of the last that I have with my children here Monday to Friday 9 till 10 past 3. I'm struggling to try and imagine how I would be feeling right now if my children were starting school in September but they're not. We've decided to home educate for now and for as long as it's working for all of us. So I thought it'd be great to put this video together to list my top five reasons why we have come to this decision as a family. If you've also decided not to send your kids to school this September, um, I would love to know your reasons. Please leave me a comment or if you've been home educating for a long time, I would also love to hear what drove you to do it and how it's going for you any tips for a newbie home educator. I want to add a caveat for um, anyone who maybe isn't in the home ed world in that I do recognise my extreme privilege in being able to stay at home with my children and home educate. It's not an option that is available to everyone but I do know a lot of single parents, working parents who do make home education work so if that's your situation don't think it's just a write-off for you completely. There are always options that you can explore. So without further ado, let's get into reason number one why I'm not sending my kids to school this September. Reason number one is time. Have you ever wondered how much of a child's life is consumed by getting ready for, attending and fulfilling the necessities that come with school? Well, thankfully the famous author and former teacher John Taylor Gatto has broken it down for us in one of his books, I believe it was Dumbing Us Down. So amongst the hours children spend sleeping and watching TV, he adds of the children he teaches, my children attend school 30 hours a week use about six hours getting ready, going and coming home, and spend on average seven hours a week in homework, a total of 45 hours. That leaves 12 hours a week out of which to create a unique consciousness. Of course, my kids eat and that takes some time. Not much because they've lost the tradition of family dining. But if we allot three hours a week to evening meals, we arrive at a net amount of private time for each child of nine hours. Essentially, he would say with our modern school system or not so modern school system, we take all of children's time from them, time that they need to grow up at their own pace and force them to spend that time on abstractions of our choice, not theirs. On the subject of time, I don't want to spend time every morning hassling my children to get ready for the school run. I want us to have the time to be able to travel, to see the world, one of the best ways that children can learn, and not just all crammed into six weeks summer holidays where, as we know, all the travel agents hike the prices up by double if not more. I want to spend time with my children not shipping them off to some other people who we barely know whilst they use their time spread out over 30 plus children. I want to spend time with my children, not all the time, but I want to see what they're learning, be part of their learning process as I guide them in the things that they're interested in. I don't want them to spend six hours a day inside the same building before coming home and using their time in the evening to do homework something which uh, the speaker Alfie Cohn equates to working a second shift when we've already done a full day's work. Why do kids need to work a second shift when they get home on academic assignments? And an argument many non-home educators like to use, 
well, I have to go and spend six plus hours a day at the same building, at my office job. That's what the real world is. We have to prepare them for their future. Okay, maybe you do spend your time like that. Do you enjoy it? Are you thriving? That's great. But many people don't spend their time like that or don't want to spend their time like that and don't realise it's a choice not to. Many people may spend it outdoors or working with animals. They may not have a boss. They may be entrepreneurs, business owners, makeup artists, fashion designers, therapists, football players, or our children could end up doing a job that hasn't even been invented yet. If you're in kindergarten right now, most jobs don't even have a name yet for that you'll have once you get into the workforce. Which allows me to nicely sidestep into reason number two. System. The school system. One of many issues is that the school system can't prepare us to job for jobs that don't even exist yet. When I was at school and we were focusing on the what do we want to be when we grow up, there was no such job as web designer or social media manager. Those sort of careers weren't weren't even on anybody's radar. And now in 2022, there's jobs that aren't on our radar that will be very much an option for our children once they reach working age. I mean, we could make a whole entire video series about what's wrong with today's current school system. Maybe I will someday. But fundamentally, the school system is a system with many systemic issues that are inherent to the whole system that won't be changed by just tweaking or changing individual parts. And I don't want anyone to think that my choice not to send my children to school is reflective on what I think of teachers because I think there are many great teachers and I know many great teachers but they're still stuck within the system that they're working in. They don't have all the freedom to teach children in whichever way they want to. If they want to continue to have jobs at schools, then they need to be chasing pass marks, preparing children to pass examinations. There's nothing they can do about that. They can't let children learn whatever interests them or spend their time at school however they feel fit. They can't, as far as I know, and correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, they can't opt out of giving children detentions for certain behaviour or marks on their academic record. I don't want my children to go into the school system and be at risk of being bullied because there's no denying that that is a real issue, especially for children from ethnic minorities bullied both by students and teachers, whether they're conscious of it or not. I mean, let's call it what there is. There's a systemic racism problem in school system and many of the institutions within the UK and worldwide. I don't want my children to be a part of that. And what's maybe applicable to our situation because of the age of our children, I personally believe that in the UK we start children into formal academic learning too young and it's widely sort of spoken about that we're one of the only countries in the whole of Europe who start children this young at, at four and five because most of the rest of, the Euro of Europe don't start proper schooling until age seven where they will start to teach numeracy and literacy etc. And there has been lots of research to show the benefits, the long-term benefits of not trying to enforce that teaching at such a young age. Reason number three is environment. Now we've touched on this a little bit already in the last point where I spoke about not wanting my children to spend all their day for many years in the same building. And to elaborate, I would say, why do we want to spend all day in a building when we could be out playing in the forest or by the waterfront at a museum or library in this country or in another country. I don't want them to have to spend the best part of their day sat down at a desk when they should be running around or gripping onto a pen with their young hands trying to learn writing that they don't really need yet. Standing in a queue to enter a classroom when they could be running through a field or a playground. And just when they do finally get to that point of being engrossed in a bit of work, a bell rings and tells them to stop and move on to do a bit of work completely unrelated to what they were just doing. It doesn't make sense to me. And having to wear clothes that they've had no part in choosing that are designed to make them look like every single other child in that school. Having to ask permission to take their jumper off when it's hot 
that actually was the case at my secondary school or having to ask for permission to just use the toilet in my opinion school and a school building just isn't the right environment isn't a natural environment for children to be spending their day in it isn't a natural environment for anyone to spend their day let alone young children who are in that phase of rapid development and can be really affected by where they spend their days the school environment is the polar opposite environment to how children have learned everything they have up until that point by living in the real world and doing real life activities. Okay on to point number four we're getting there and that is people. As a home educator and I'm sure of those of you watching who are home educators you all know one of the big arguments against home educating is that children need to go to school to learn to socialize and to prepare them for interacting with the real world and society i see that as completely false and here's why firstly when in your life do you spend your entire day interacting with people of only your exact age group being told what to do and when and how to do it by people substantially older than you and if you don't do what they tell you to do they have the authority to detain you in a building for an extended period of time more so than what you already signed up for or put some kind of behavioral record that affects your educational performance and before you bring up the argument that well you have managers and you have bosses and having teachers at school prepared you for that sort of relationship well if you're working for a boss that treats you like a pupil in the school system, aka micromanages you, then you need to hop for it out of there as soon as you can. Personally, in my career, I've worked with people of all different ages. In all the offices I worked, it was never just one age group working together with managers of another age group. And I've worked, thankfully, in jobs that I've chosen to do. And for the most part, my managers have given me a large degree of autonomy over how I complete the work that I'm required to do. And yes, my children will interact with adults frequently. Adults in their friends' lives, in shops, in museums, at workshops, the library, train stations, all from different walks of life as we walk through life together. With all the time they have available to them, because they're not spending it in the same building with the same people year in, year out. And my children socialise with so many other children, some of their own age groups, some older, some younger. And they all interact and play with each other, learn and teach with each other, and form the relationships that humans are supposed to form with each other. Okay, reason number five for why I'm not sending my kids to school this September. And of all the reasons that I've listed so far, it would never have happened if it wasn't for this one reason. I realised it was a choice. <laughs> now that might sound really um, basic, but up until my kids were about three years old, I didn't even realise it was a choice whether to send them to school or not. I'm not sure how it had passed me by for all these years, all the years I was in school and I never realised that it was a choice whether you go to school or not. Until one day, I think I was researching when the application deadline was for sending my children to school. So I went on the government website, I believe, to read the words, you can also choose to teach your child at home, known as homeschooling. Now we'll ignore the fact that on a UK website they're using the term homeschooling and not home education but I was like what? This is an option, I don't have to send my children to school and from that moment onwards I knew that I wouldn't be sending them to school. Now obviously this isn't advertised regularly as something that is an option because that would do the powers that be no good in this country but I realised it was an option and it's an option for everybody. And I want my children to know that it's a choice. I want them to know that in life there is always choice. Like how much anxiety and depression that people go through is driven from feeling like you have no choice in life and in your circumstances. And I know sometimes making that choice can be difficult, it can be dangerous for some people, it can seem financially impossible, but there is always a choice. I want my children to know that they have a choice over their bodies, how they spend their time, where they spend their time, what they choose to learn 
and I want them to know that I'm always here to help them navigate and understand the choices that are available to them. I never knew I had a choice about going to school or even university for that matter. In a way it was just something that everyone did in my generation, in my particular school. It was just the done thing and I would have loved to have known some of the other options that were available to me to be able to make a more informed choice. There's nothing worse in life than knowing feeling like you don't have a choice in how your life plays out and children face that almost every day in their lives because of their positions in the world and we as as the adults have to find ways to liberate them and give them the choices that they deserve I believe. So to kind of sum up all these five reasons as, as important they, as they are in the individual aspects, the overarching reason that I'm not <laughs> sending my children to school is that to me school makes no sense. You know and some of you watching this who aren't considering home education may be thinking well actually like home education makes no no sense. It's one of these woo woo crazy ideas that, that only the hippies follow. But you know to quote John Taylor Gatto, is there an idea more radical in the history of the human race than turning your children over to total strangers whom you know nothing about and having those strangers work on your child's mind out of your sight for a period of 12 years? Could there be an idea more radical than that? I don't personally think so and so those are my reasons for why my children aren't going to be starting school this September with all the other four-year-olds. I would love to know what your reasons are if you're also not choosing to send your, your children to school or if you're choosing to bring your children out of school. I know that people have so many different reasons for why they choose to home educate. Those were my reasons, what are yours? And if you are on your home educating journey, I wish you well and I'll see you on the next video. Bye!